Hello, in this tutorial, we are going to cover the full process of setting up a dynamic snow environment like this. We're going to be covering how to use the ultra dynamic sky asset to add a snow weather preset to your world, as well as how to modify your landscape materials so that they will automatically collect snow as well as your assets, and also how to set up your characters so that they make dynamic snow trails as they walk through your world. We're going to be, like I said, using the ultra dynamic sky asset if you'd like to grab that asset, you can find a link to it in the description. Let's get into it. I'm going to start with this level here. I have a landscape and a material set up in the landscape, and I've already gone ahead and dragged in the ultra dynamic sky asset. But if you're not familiar with how to do that, let me go ahead and escape out of this and we will go to our content browser navigate to our ultra dynamic sky asset, come to blueprints. And all I've done is just gone and dragged this ultra dynamic sky straight in and that's it. No special settings whatsoever. The next step is to actually add the ultra dynamic weather asset because these two assets work together. They talk to each other. And in fact, the ultra dynamic weather asset will overwrite and you know take control of some of the settings in the sky asset so that it matches the weather effect that you have set up. So pretty cool. So go ahead and take this ultra dynamic weather asset and drag it into my level here. And by default, it sets up a raining weather. But we can go ahead and if I move my head here, and we come to our content browser and we come to our new dynamic weather blueprint that we just added and we click on it, we can see we have a bunch of settings here. And these are all manual settings that you can go ahead and change yourself. I'm not gonna go into in depth into all of these settings. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I do recommend if you're ever not sure about something or you wanna look up what a particular setting does, weather documentation here is just a click away and it's very easy to follow. So you can just come over here and you can see I have all these different sections about how to work with particles, all that good stuff. So I do recommend checking that out if you need a reference. But under here, there is a weather option, and this is where we can go ahead and add a weather preset. We could set all of these settings, you know, the amount of snow, the amount of cloud coverage, the amount of fog, but it's actually a lot simpler and easier, in the, especially in the beginning, to just use a preset and we can make our own presets. But we can find all the presets that came with the ultra dynamic weather asset by coming to the weather effects folder here clicking on that to open it, and then coming to the weather presets folder. And these are all preset weather setups that uh, have all the settings already tweaked to look like this particular weather setup. So we have our rain here as well. We have a partly cloudy. So if we drag that into our weather field here, we can see we have a partly cloudy setup. We have a light rain setup. So if I come over and I drag this in, it'll be just a light rain or a dust <laughs> storm. We're going to go ahead and choose the snow option because we're going to be focusing on snow in this tutorial. Now I have my weather set up for my snowflakes. They're falling down. And like I said, if you want to, you can create your own preset set for the snow as well. And the way you would do that is just right click on it and hit duplicate. And then you can make your own set of settings. Like if we double click on this to open it, we can see it's just a data asset, which is just a collection of pieces of data that are read into our blueprints. And so you can see here that I have all of the preset, like how much rain there is, how much snow there is, lightning, fog, on or off, things like that. And those are all just simple options you can change here to really change the feeling of your weather here. And these are literally just slightly different versions of the, that basic set of settings in our data assets here. So you could very easily right click and duplicate this to create a snow number two. And then we could go ahead and make our own adjustments to what we want to see here. So I'll go ahead and close that out. So we've gone ahead and we added our ultra dynamic weather asset. We've added our preset for our weather. Now it's the fun part where we get to have it start to affect our world. The first thing I'll set up here is the actual material on the landscape. It doesn't really matter how you have your material set up on your landscape. What we're going to be doing is just adding an additional function into that material. I'm going to scroll down here with my landscape selected to my landscape material and I'll double click on my material instance here and uh, here it is and I'm just going to go to the parent and double click on that to open my master material. 
and I'll drag that over. All right. So this is my master material. I'm not really going to go into in this tutorial how to set up a master material for a landscape. I have other videos on that. But in this one, I want to just show you how to easily connect it up to the ultra dynamic sky weather system. So we need to make a material function. The material function comes with the ultra dynamic weather asset itself when you've added it to your project. And so we can find it by typing in dynamic and landscape. And this is what we want. Dynamic landscape weather effects version two. There's an older version. So just make sure you're using version two is the most recent. And when we click on that, it creates this ginormous node with all of these inputs and outputs. And don't get overwhelmed, though. This is really just meant to go in between whatever streams you have, you know, plugging into your material card here. So if you don't have all of these inputs, don't worry, you don't need to plug them in. It's just the ones that you actually have active in your material. So we can already see here I have a base color. So if I hold down control and click here, I can disconnect that and reconnect it into my base color input on my weather node. And then I can put this new base color output in. It's that's it. It's just hijacking the, the stream here and just putting this node in between. So now I can do the same thing for roughness and I'll reconnect roughness here and normal and ambient occlusion. There is no input here for ambient occlusion. So I'll just leave that as is. But we're still getting an error here, and that is because there are two very particular inputs here, the apply wetness puddle and the apply snow dust. And you can see next to it that there's a little SB next to it. SB stands for, well, all of these parentheses stand for the kind of data that they're accepting in. And this particular one is a static Boolean. Static Boolean is just basically a, a yes or a no. It's a zero or one. It's like a one option or the other. And so it's in order for this node to function, it kind of needs to know which one you choose for each of these two inputs. So we can go ahead and make that parameter for ourselves. So if I right click and type in static bool, and there's two options here. If we want to change it in our material instance, we should choose a parameter. So I'll go ahead and choose that and I'll name it what it is, which is apply wetness slash puddle. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It's choosing whether or not you actually apply the puddle layer on top of these materials if it's raining. That's what it is, or the wetness uh, layer. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And this is the default value, and we can switch it on. So we want to say, yes, by default, we want it to be wet on the ground when it's raining. And we'll copy and paste this down here, and we'll rename it to be apply snow slash dust which is the other one here, the other static Boolean. And this one we'll plug in as well. And this is the one we care about specifically for this tutorial that we actually turn on the snow here or dust. So there'll be a layer of dust or snow, depending on which weather effect you choose, will automatically update in here, which is really cool. Now we have those plugged in, we have it turned on. I'll go ahead and save this material. We'll come back here and bam, it's already added a layer of snow to our landscape material, which looks really cool. I just want to show you, I'm going to come back to my weather effects here. This is, this is all dynamic. So if I come back here to my, remember we were doing the presets here. So if I, instead of snow, chose light snow, you can see there's a smaller different option of snow here. That's just looks like it's lightly dusted and the same with rain if i come add the rain preset here now you can see the ground is all wet looks like the ground the little splashes on the ground and those little puddles look you can see a little puddle here a little puddle over there so really cool i'm going to switch back to my snow actually let's look at the, the dust here really quick yeah there you go so there's a layer of dust now on the ground as well so really cool really awesome how this is just adapts automatically this is our snow we have set up and this is the node and function we use for our actual landscape material. There's a slightly different function we use for our props or characters and other objects that are going to be affected by the snow. So for example, this rock, it's not using our landscape material, it's using a, a different material. So we use a slightly different function for that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this rock and I'll double click on this material to open it and I'll open the master material. Here we go. Okay, so this is my material for the rock. What we want to type in is surface weather effects. And this is the one we want, surface weather effects. If we click on that, we get a similarly epic node, but this one is specifically designed for objects and not necessarily landscapes. So you can see by default that it has a material input set up and a material output set up instead of specific inputs like diffuse, roughness, metallic. It's doing this because it expects that you're probably going to just 
be using this particular material setup where you're using just a single stream. But you might also be, if I disconnect this, you might also be in your material, you don't have this use material attributes setup. You might also have uh, this sort of setup with your material. So we have two different approaches we could use to take the materials, material, you know, roughness, normal map, all those inputs and make it work with this node. The first one is make material attributes. This is basically gonna duplicate this material card over here, but let us combine all of these inputs into a single stream that we can plug in here to the material inputs. And you can use this exactly like you would in the rest of your materials. You have your base color, metallic, specular roughness, all that good stuff. So you would plug that in, you'd plug in all of your material inputs that you have, and then this material attribute would come over here and you'd take your card here, you click on it, and you choose this option, use material attribute, and that will collapse it down. And then you can go ahead and plug that in. So you could use this make material attributes. There's also a different node here that is a little cleaner. If we delete this and we create a set material attributes option here. This one is a little smaller and we can actually just choose what particular inputs we have and want. So if we just have a, a base color and a normal and a roughness, for example, we don't necessarily maybe need this whole card and it's a little visually confusing. So we could click on this and hit the plus button here and just add any inputs here on the left that we want. So I could add a base color, a metallic, specular, roughness, plug them in, and then this could go straight into my material input here. And this could also work here. Um, you know, you can have a material input here and then, you know, add additional options into your stream here. But we don't have that. So we're going to go ahead and plug this straight in here. And this has exactly the same issue here with this error where we need to actually set our apply snow and apply wetness boolean. So I'll go ahead and right click and create a static boolean parameter. And again, I'll name this to be apply wetness. And this one will be apply snow slash dust. Okay, plug them in and I'll go ahead and turn them on. Great. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And now if we come back to our level here, we can see our rocks have this beautiful layer of snow on top of them. Great. So now we have our landscape set up and we have our assets in our world set up. So I have a character now and they are running around the snow, but their feet aren't really making any interaction with the ground, uh, the snow that's on the ground. So we want to go ahead and add snow trails to her feet. All right. So I'll go ahead and hit escape and I will go ahead and open up her blueprint. This is the character blueprint that you have set up for your character. So you're going to go ahead and open that up. And this is the blueprint that contains their skeleton inside of it. So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and add a particular asset that comes with the ultra dynamic weather system. I want to be adding that to each foot so that it actually makes the interaction with the ground. That asset is found in the ultra dynamic sky under blueprints, under weather effects, and it's here called DLWE interaction. This is the asset here that we want, and it has this little icon here of uh, pressing down into something. This asset here is the one we need to add to our feet. And the way that we add and connect assets to any skeleton, not just this type of asset, but like if you had weapons or other things, it's connected using what's called a socket. A socket is a preset location that's connected to a particular bone in your skeleton that you can then snap and attach objects to. My character also already has a socket set up, but I want to show you just in case your skeleton doesn't have a socket set up, how to set up that socket. So by clicking on the skeleton here, I can open the original skeletal mesh. If I double click on that, to open it and I show you over here. So this is the actual skeleton for my character here. And on the right side, you can see that I have a bunch of these bone names here. And so if I wanted to go ahead and add a socket, I could come down here and maybe I'll search the foot bone and I could find there's a left foot here. Now you can see there's already a socket added to it, but if I wanted to add a socket, we can see here I have my foot bone selected down here. It's highlighted. And what I can do is I can right click and come and add socket here. This will now add a new socket that I can go ahead and double click on to rename. And I will just, I could call it foot left socket, name it something different, left socket. There we go. And now it's a new socket on my foot. And if I need to reposition that socket, I can reposition it here now and uh, put it like exactly where I want it to be on the foot or where I want something to be connected to it on the foot. And that's how you add a socket. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And we want to make sure that we have a socket like this on both of our feet of our character on our left foot and on our right foot. 
or if you have a quadruped, you would want one on each foot of your horse or bear or whatever you're adding this to. Now I can come back to my blueprint here and I will just put it up to the side here. And what I wanna do is click on my skeletal mesh here that I wanna add it to. And we wanna take this DLWE interaction and drag this asset directly onto this skeletal mesh here. So it's right underneath. So now we can see our skeletal mesh and underneath its child is the DLWE interaction component. With that component selected, now we can come over here to the right and attach it to a socket because it's parented to the, to the skeleton, but it doesn't know where it should be parented in the skeleton and connected to which bone, for example because we want it to continue to move with the foot as the foot moves. Here, you'll have a socket option, and under the parent socket, we can then go ahead and search. These are all the possible sockets, so we can go ahead and search foot, and we can see here there's a right foot socket. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and you can see down here by the gizmo that it has snapped to the appropriate location on the foot. If you need to reposition it, you can go ahead and reposition it. So now it's connected to the socket on the foot. Now I can go ahead and right here, I can right click on this asset and duplicate it so that there's two of them. And the other one, I can go to the parent socket here and type in so uh, foot again and connect this one to the right foot or the left foot rather, we already did the right foot. Now we can go ahead, compile and save. Now, before we move on here, I wanna just show you something really quick here in the asset. So these each components are very simple, but the way that what they have connected here are two options. There's a size and there's an interaction settings asset. The size relates to how big the hitbox is on the thing you've connected to your foot. So if you have your foot making contact with your snow or whatever, and it's making a size like a, a footprint that's too small or too big, this is where you would change that, the size here. And this is different depending on each asset. So this size could be 24, this size we could change and be 20, 54 or whatever. I'm gonna keep mine as default because it is usually pretty close to the size of a normal human foot, but you can always change that here. Another thing here is the interaction settings. Now, the interaction settings is another data asset similar to the weather settings that we set up a minute ago. This is a data asset with a collection of settings that represents how this interaction should happen with the snow. So if I double click on this to open it, you can see we have a bunch of settings here and uh, we can you know, turn on and off sound effects. We can increase the distance that these footprints are active in. We can lower or increase the tick which is how accurate it is when you know searching for different hits on the ground, uh, like how often it, it searches that in your character interaction, like when you're playing in the game. These are all great settings that you can dig into. And if we wanna look for where this settings asset is located, we can hit this button up here in the top left, which searches it. And now we can find that this is the standard DLW inter DWE interaction data asset. And if we want to make a different set of settings that's specific to our asset, or we wanna change them and but keep the original or we want different sets of settings on different feet all we have to do is right click on this and duplicate it and we can open that up we can make our specific settings here and then we can come back to our component and drag those new settings into our asset here and now it will be affected by those new settings okay that is the setup here i'll go ahead and hit save and now let's go ahead and hit play and test this great so now we're getting some great looking snow trails. It's looking really good. Looks like it's working pretty well here. Awesome. If you found this video helpful, shoot me a thumbs up or a comment to let me know. And of course, always subscribe for more tutorials like this. If you're interested in learning Unreal Engine specifically with me, you might be interested in Azial Art Academy. It is a combination of all my courses in one place, regular coaching and custom tutorials, and a great private community where you can share your Unreal Engine journey, get feedback on your projects. If you're interested in something like that, you can find a link in the description. I will see you in the next one.